in 1 Corinthians 12th chapter, starting at verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Verse 28, 12, 28. And God set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. Twenty-nine are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Notice now, it says God said in the church, first apostles, second prophets, and thirdly teachers. So if they're the first, second, and a third, they're the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now when you read these verses, normally this is what you think. First apostles, that's a preacher. Second prophets, that's a preacher. Thirdly teachers, that's basically a preacher. Then after that, miracles. You think gifts of the Spirit. Healings, you think gifts of the Spirit. Helps, gifts of the Spirit. Governments, gifts of the Spirit. Diversity of tongue, gifts of the Spirit. Basically. But these are talking about individuals with those gifts. Apostles, one. Prophets, two. Teachers, three. Those that have the gift of working miracles, four. Those who have the gifts of healing, five. Helps, six. Governments, seven. Diversity of tongues, eight. These are priorities regarding the gifts. You got to have a first, you got to have a second, you got to have a third on down. And notice, the gift of the pastor and the evangelist is not even mentioned here. Does that mean that they are not necessary? Of course not. All the gifts are necessary. We haven't even gotten to Romans 12 chapter that talks about the gifts of exhortation, the gifts of mercy, even the gifts of giving. So there are actually well over 20, over 20, somewhere between 20 to 22 gifts of the Spirit mentioned in the, in the Bible. But the only gift that you are aware of, that you have been taught, is the gift of the pastor. It did not say God said in the church, first pastors. Then unfortunately you have a lot of pastors who are claiming to be apostles. That is another story. Check out my teaching on the ministry of the apostles. But there are gifts in the Bible that people don't even know about. Actually, they don't even know who they are. All you know are preachers. And preachers actually really don't want the body to know who they really are. Because it takes the focus off of them. Many years ago, I was a member of a particular church. I had left it some time later, and I heard this, this preacher over the radio. And he said, you've got those people that's always talking about the gifts. They are always seeking after the gifts. But they are not taught to seek the giver of the gifts. That's Jesus Christ. So what he was saying was that you don't need to know who you are. You need to just hear my sermon. Hear my sermons. Hear my preachings on Jesus. 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 But that's not what the scriptures is talking about. When you come together, Jesus clearly said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, they are my in the midst of them. You don't seek after somebody that's already with you. Jesus Christ said, I'm with you even until the end of the world. My Father and I are with you. How can you seek somebody that's already with you? But there's a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight that's mentioned here regarding the gifts of the Spirit. First apostle, second prophet, third teachers. After that, those who have the gift of working the miracles. Not the preacher. 
is someone in the body of Christ that has that gift. Well, whether you realize it or not, the majority of people who go to church have the slightest clue that they have a gift. The reason is because they are children of God. The children of the devil know who they are. The children of the devil, those people can do miraculous things that boggles the imagination. And it is basically done in secret. They have these secret coverings and these secret meetings. They can do supernatural, phenomenal things, people, that boggles the imagination. But it's done in secret. But yet we as Christians go to these revival meetings where some men get up and preach to you a sermon, grabs kick you in Jesus' name, Punches you in the stomach in Jesus' name, then take your money in Jesus' name. When actually miracles are within the local body. Everyone that is a Christian, everyone that is saved has a gift. First apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers after that, miracles. What about miracles? Casting out devils is a miracle. Jesus stated in Mark 9 there was a minister a John said to Jesus in Mark 9 38 and John answered him saying Master we saw one casting out devils in thy name and he follows us not but we forbade him because he follows not us but Jesus said forbid him not for there is no man which can do a miracle in my name that can speak likely evil of me that's Mark 9 38 to 39. Jesus Christ called casting out devils a miracle. In 90, I was an elder of a particular church. And I taught a spiritual warfare class for two years. And I trained people how to cast out devils. And I remember as I trained people, as the month went by, I noticed that they had an anointing greater than mine. And I had been casting out devils for well over Ten years. And they had only been casting out devils for a few months. But their anointing exceeded mine. Why? Because I activated that gift within them. The gift of miracles. Or actually the gift of faith. They bypassed they back me as far as casting out devils is concerned. I wasn't jealous. I was happy. But you got a lot of preachers that don't want the body of Christ to function in who they are. The reason is because if somebody needed deliverance, he's the one that usually does all the miracles, all the laying on of hands, all the casting out devils, everything goes through him. But what if somebody really needed a miracle and they know that you could help them? That they know you got a greater anointing than the pastor. They're going to go to you. Pastors don't want that. Preachers, many preachers don't want that. They don't want to focus off of them. They just want you to be a member of his church and make sure you give him your time and your money. They do not want you to go up into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. There is a lot of jealousy by preachers over many of these churches. Worker of miracles. Now it goes further than what I'm talking about. Then you got the next gift. The fifth gift. Healings. There are people who have gifts of curing specific cancers. I mean, there are too many diseases to deal with. That's their gift. But they don't even know they got it. And the reason is because pastors and preachers don't want the body of Christ to know who they really are. You have people who can lay hands on people and cure astigmatism. That's their gift. Cure arthritis. That's their gift. All that God has given every Christian in the body of Christ a particular gift. And I can't get to all of these gifts, helps in governments and all that. There's too many to talk about. We are supernatural children of God. We should be operating supernaturally. The supernatural should be normal when we meet together. 
But instead, when we meet together, we are taught to be members of an organization. You join a church, sit on that pew, later on you might be qualified to be a greeter, a trustee. Join the choir. Join the praise team. Be a pastor's aide. Maybe a deacon. But what about who you really are? A work of miracle. Somebody that has the gift of discerning of spirits. My God. Instead of being taught to be a members of the body of Christ, we have been taught to be church members. God have mercy upon the church. God bless.